quick. Sit up. The hospital board is meeting. I won't sit down. Oh, thank you. I was about to say the hospital board is meeting uh, the last week of the month, and I'd like you to be there in case they want to ask any questions. Sure. Well, my calendar. Not that we'll have the same kind of fight we had with Mark. You know, everyone on that board knew your father practically, and they've uh, followed your career from the beginning, so I'm, I'm expecting unanimous approval. Oh, that's, that's very flattering, Steve. Rick, are you worried about this appointment? I mean, I, I, I know you're young for the post, but uh, you're not without experience. You handled yourself beautifully during Dr. Perlman's absence. It shouldn't be any different now that you're going to replace him permanently. No, I'm not worried about it. A little nervous, maybe, but um, that's all. It's all so new to me. Well, something's bothering you. You know, when I first tapped you for this job, you got very excited. You said following in your father's footsteps was a dream come true, but now you seem almost uninterested. Oh, that's not it, believe me. It's just that, <sighs> well, Leslie has broken our engagement. What? Why? When did this happen? Just a couple of hours ago. She sent her engagement ring back with a messenger and a note telling me that it was all over. But did she give you a reason? There must be some explanation. Oh, yeah, she had an explanation, all right. That by marrying me, she'd hurt me. Hurt you? That doesn't make sense, does it? Well, not to me, it doesn't. And I'm not sure just how much sense it makes to her, either. You know, I raced over to the tower after I got the letter. I tried to pin her down. She gave me some kind of excuse about how she had mistaken gratitude for love. But I had declared myself to her at a time when, well, she was in an emotional mood. She was vulnerable. You know, she had just gotten her daughter back, and uh, she was carrying a child whose father was dead. And you think it's true? I know it's not true, Steve. Hey, Terry told me long before Leslie ever knew she was pregnant that she was in love with me. I mean, let alone getting Laura back. Now, there's something that she's not telling me. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it before this day is over. Wait a minute, Gina. You're saying that it's interfering with her recovery? While I was there just now, she told me that she'd had another memory breakthrough while she and Mary Ellen were going over some song lyrics. But instead of relieving her, it upset her. She didn't know why. Maybe it was fear of something that hasn't come back to her yet. Well, if it was the beginning of her recalling the car... No, oh, no, no, it had nothing to do with that. She didn't go into details, but... I gather it had to do with something that happened in her office. Well, but that's not the point, Rick. I'm sure it's Mary Ellen's presence that's a real cause of her upset. Ah, oh, believe me. My sister-in-law's had a talent for making me nervous since the day I met her. That's all Terry needs right now. Well, did you tell her that? Mm. I tried. But she wouldn't accept it. That's why I thought you should know. I've become fond of Terry. I, I hate to see her taking it on the chin. Try to talk some sense into her head tonight, Rick. Maybe she'll listen to you. tapped you for the post's department, Chief. Well, Leslie's been re-evaluating things. She doesn't like what she sees. You mean she doesn't want me to accept the job? Oh, no, no, she's all for it. She knows how much it means to you and how hard you worked for it almost from the time you were in medical school. No, as she sees it, the problem is Leslie herself and, and what you'll be getting into if you marry her. Well, I don't understand. I mean, if she's worried about Laura, that's ridiculous. She knows how I feel about that kid. I'm looking forward to being a father to her. She knows you think you're looking forward to it. But she's afraid you don't know what a big change it'll make in your life. You know, going from bachelorhood to the responsibilities of married life, family life. Wait a minute. You're saying that she doesn't want to marry me because it's going to be too big a change? No. Not, not that in itself. She's just afraid that... It would be too much for you to handle, uh, particularly in view of the added pressure of your new post. Thank you, Adam. You've just done me an incredible favor. She's been giving you a hard time, too. Huh? No, brother. You know, you're a very lucky guy, Rick. I mean, a woman has to really be in love to fret because she thinks she might be an added strain to her to-be husband's new plum assignment. <laughs> they really are a strange breed, aren't they? I mean, just when you think you've got them all figured out, they go off on some kind of tangent, just baffle us completely. Well, I hope you 
get her straightened out on the road to the altar. You know, I'm very fond of her, Doctor, but uh, I think it's high time that I turned her over to you. Well, Doctor, consider that referral accepted. <laughs> Over. We have nothing left to say to each other. I think we have a lot to say to each other. I mean, take that bit that, that you handed me in the letter about you mistaking gratitude for love. Now, tell me the truth. That isn't really what you meant, was it? Yes, it is what I meant. It's no basis for marriage. I'm sorry if I have to dispute that with you, my love, but I just spent a little time with Adam, and he's given me a whole new slant on the situation. Adam? Mm-hmm. Well, he was in here to examine you the other day. You told him that you were afraid about my becoming an instant father and husband, that maybe it'd be too much for me to handle, particularly in the light of the new post that Steve has offered me. Well, I do anything halfway, and, and with such an important job, you, you'd want to put a lot of yourself into it and, and to take on a, a new family at the same time. Leslie, I've been acting temporary chief of cardiac surgery for weeks now. I'm aware of the demands, and believe me, I can handle it and be a devout husband to you and a good father to Laura. I know you try. Rick, Rick, how would you feel if for some reason the board wouldn't okay your appointment? I mean, I know it's far-fetched, but just suppose. Well, I'd, I'd be decimated. I've wanted this practically my whole life, but, but whether or not the board okays, it has nothing to do with you and me. Oh, Rick. See that you haven't done anything with the ring. No, I was, uh... I was I'm trying to find a box to send it back to you. Why don't you put it back on your finger? I know you love me. The only reason you've been doing this is because you, you don't want to drain me. But, sweetheart, that's ridiculous. If this post doesn't mean anything to me without you at my side to share it with Rick, me. Rick, please. Adam or no, I did mean what I said. I can't take back your ring. Marriage for us just was not meant to be. Les, I, I don't know what the hell's gotten into you, but you're not making any sense at all. And I'm not accepting anything back from you until you do make some sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna find out what it is that, that's gotten you like this if I have to hammer at you both day and night. some coffee and then I'll come back and look on you later, okay? Don't you want me to cook you some breakfast? Nope. Positively not. Mm. You're a good man, Peter Taylor. Dr. Weber, I'd like to set up an appointment with you to discuss a legal matter. Well, I was expecting your call, Dr. Weber. Lee Baldwin's office called me yesterday afternoon and told me you'd be calling me. I understand you want to talk about a divorce. That's right. Um, would you be able to see me uh, this morning or today? Yes. Um, I could make it at... How would 10.30 be for you? Oh, 10.30 is fine. I'll look for you then. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davis.
feeling? Okay, I guess. Hope you're not still worrying about that vase you dropped yesterday. Well, was clumsy of me, wasn't it? No, not particularly. It wasn't worth crying over, you know, or worrying about either. Everybody has accidents, and that, uh, that vase is not exactly a priceless family heirloom. I'd just put it out of my mind if I were you. Yeah, that's good advice, Jess. In, in fact, I've done just that. Jeff. Hi, I was uh, looking for Mark. Oh, he's over at the university this morning. Some kind of seminar. Mm-hmm. What are you doing here? Oh, I just asked Mark if I could use his office to do some work. And he said it was okay as long as I got these files cleaned up by the time he got back. And so that's just what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Good. Well, I don't want to keep you from your appointed task, so uh, see you later. Oh, Rick, wait a minute. Uh, I'd like to talk to you if you've got a minute. Well, I suppose I could take one if uh, the cause was worthy. Yeah, it is. You uh, want to talk about Monica? No, it's more important than that. Rick, I'd like to talk to you about Heather Grant. She asked me, so I had to tell her honestly that I didn't love her, but that I thought that I could learn in time. Uh -huh. What did she say about that? Well, I, I guess it wasn't the most romantic proposal she's ever had. She said she couldn't marry someone who didn't love her, and I really don't blame her. She's obviously a very sensible girl. Uh, she's a lot of things, Rick. She's honest and kind and more gentle than any girl I've ever known. Exactly the kind of girl I should be in love with. <sighs> Jeff, uh, I don't know what you expect. I mean, you don't recover overnight from the kind of emotional upheaval that you've gone through. Now, why don't you give it a little time? Now, you'll fall in love again. You think so? Of course you will. What you have to guard against right now is, is the tendency that we all have. That's to overreact. Now, I know how much you want a child, but it would be wrong to marry Heather for that reason. I don't know, Rick. People have gotten married for worse reasons. Mm-hmm. And they've gotten divorced quickly, too. No, you don't get married and then expect love to follow. I mean, it, it has to be there to begin with. And then if it is, well, you've got plenty of time to get married. I guess. Good morning. No. Hey, is this where the absent-minded need to reminisce? Oh, I guess there was wool gathering there. Yeah, I guess you were. And what were you thinking about? Uh, at that moment, I was thinking about Monica. And, uh... What she said to me the last time we talked, all that business about not causing you any trouble, and I was wondering how long her good intentions are going to last. You really do like to borrow trouble, don't you? Oh, no, I can't help but be concerned. She, she's unstable, she's untrustworthy. Mm -hmm. And you also said that she sounded sincere. Well, yes. When she said that she loves you, too much to hurt you. I guess I believed that. I don't suppose she'll ever stop loving you. She will. In time. Love needs some kind of nourishment to keep on living. Yes, love does. But obsession doesn't. You know, it really is sad to see somebody so obsessed by any kind of emotion. It is sad, Leslie. You're right. That's why I feel more sorry for her than I do angry. But hey, let's stop dwelling on Monica. She has no part in our lives, so let's not give her one, huh? Oh, you're right. You're right, you're right. With a little luck, she won't be a part of Jeff's life either for too much longer. <laughs>